Hello everyone and welcome. I'm glad to have with me my dear friend Corporal Dan Stiles with the Department of Natural Resources. We have not talked uh, on TV since last year. We actually had lunch not long ago. That's right. Uh, recognition of our local law enforcement. Uh, uh, we were at the Lawrence County Baptist Association. First of all, before we get started, how does it feel? Because I know this is a thankless job that you do, but how does it feel on a day like that where you know people appreciate you and bring you together and recognize you on part of the community? Uh, it, it does make me feel good. Um, you said you you read it right. A lot of times people perceive me as the guy that's there to ruin their good time, mm -hmm. uh, when in fact that's not the case. As long as everybody's safe and abiding by the law, we don't have any issues. But but we do appreciate recognition for mm -hmm. what we do. And it is a tough job, especially when you have to go out and uh, someone's loved one is in the river and and you can't find them because they did not wear a life jacket right but i watched you we're at the sportsman's club today uh doing this interview and i watched you up here talking to a young man that you actually helped the gentleman yes sir uh instead of writing him a ticket which right. you could have wrote a ticket yes, but sir. you uh, you assisted him in getting the proper uh papers and, and getting right. a sticker on his boat didn't you right that's 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 what we try to do is gain voluntary compliance mm -hmm. where people will do the right thing on their own. If they need help, we're there to help them. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not, like I said, out to just ruin people's good time. But on the same note, it is important and it's a law that that vessel has to be registered. Absolutely, and we do want to save lives, y'all, and that's one of the reasons we're here today. And one of those ways that you can save lives, and you're going to ruin their day, I'm going to tell you, is if they're out on this beautiful river drinking, getting drunk, and operating a motor, right. a, a boat. It's just like a motor vehicle. Exactly. Yeah, people, I, I know people like to enjoy their beverages of choice while they're on the water, and it's not illegal to consume alcohol while you're driving a boat. Mm -hmm. However, it is illegal to be under the influence of alcohol while operating a motor vessel. Mm -hmm. um, people don't realize, even if they're not legally, per se, under the influence, that slowed reaction time can change their life in an instant. Mm -hmm. um, having a boating incident, uh, this past weekend there was a fairly serious one um, in some counties east of here. Um, serious injury with an individual and it was directly attributed to alcohol. Mm -hmm. And alcohol kills, period, and drugs. Uh, uh, we, we don't want to just say alcohol because Correct. drugs is just as serious. Exactly. Whether it be prescription drugs, uh, marijuana, uh, whatever right. it might be, operating a, a uh, boat. And especially you see people out here with kids on the boat. Yes, sir. That That's our big priority. There's most people, 99% of the people on the water are doing the right thing. They're being safe. They're abiding by the laws, um, showing courtesy to other boaters. Mm -hmm. um, but you've got that small group that's always the exception. Mm -hmm. And... I don't ever want to see a child, or anybody for that matter, adult or child, to be injured out here on the river in Lawrence County because someone else was breaking a law. And especially you have to go fish them out Correct. of the water because I understand without getting too graphic, it's not a pleasant thing No, sir. from your perspective no. to go out and have to basically fish somebody. That's the right term, I would right. think. Right. There hasn't been a drowning on the Oconee in Lawrence County in several years, mm -hmm. um, and we want to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. But however, there's been numerous drownings statewide so far mm -hmm. this year uh, above normal. Yeah. In the last couple of years, we have had them on the Okmulgee, I know. We've yes. had some situations there, but we have been fortunate on the Oconee. And it's beautiful weather, summertime, people want to be out on the water, and we want them there, don't we? Absolutely. Um, the water's beautiful. The river's a little low right now. It dropped out yesterday. To, it's about mm -hmm. two feet or less right now. But it fluctuates, and uh, we want people to be out and enjoying the sandbars, and I'd love to be fishing today in the shade myself. Well, let's talk about stickers on a boat. Okay. Any kind of boat, a little John boat, any kind of boat, does any boat on public waterways, does it have to have a sticker? Any vessel that has a motor mm -hmm. um, is required to be registered. Um, and you can do that one of three ways. You can call a 1-800 number, which is 800-366-2661. Um, you can do it over the phone that way. You can do it online, or you can do it the old fashioned way. You can fill out applications, send in a check or a money order. Mm -hmm. um, we just ask that people follow through because occasionally there may, may be an issue with the previous owner, they never provided documentation about uh, the whole ID number or something for, to mm -hmm. that effect. 
and there may be a problem that's preventing them from receiving their registration in the mail to physically put on the boat. So I encourage people, if you don't receive your registration in a timely manner, call that 1-800 number, and nine times out of 10, they're gonna be able to clear this problem up mm -hmm. and get you your registration. Okay, so what you're saying is, if I'm in a raft tubing, or, or I've got a little John boat, I'm using paddles. Right. It does not have to have a sticker. That's correct. If, if the vessel doesn't have a motor on it, and now this is, when I say registration, um, that's on state waters. If you have a private pond, and you, you don't have to have your vessel registered to operate on that water, but on state waters you do. But kayaks, canoes, rafts, those, as long as they're not mechanically propelled, they do not need to be registered. Okay, what about fishing license? Who has to have those? <laughs> Everybody that's above 16 and under 65 has to have a fishing license, unless you've got a disability license or or mm -hmm. some other honorary type license. Okay, and we do have uh, uh, things around the state. We had one, I think, at Hugh Gillis recently uh, mm -hmm. where we have a fishing day. Right. And I think you exempt them that day. That's correct. There's, there's actually three free fishing days in Georgia every year. Mm -hmm. uh, the first two are the first two Saturdays of June, and then there'll be another one in September. I think it's the third Saturday mm -hmm. that honors National Hunting and Fishing Week. And the reason for that, the Department of Natural Resources encourages getting out absolutely and, fishing. and it's a great family time and family fun and uh and i know uh y'all encourage people to get out yes, and do, do it in a safe way correct we we, we want people to enjoy the resource <laughs> yeah. that's why we're here mm -hmm. um to make sure that th there's going to be a resource in the future okay and out fishing how about uh people coming up on the bank cleaning their fish as far as dumping those remains what's what, what kind of laws on that well there's unlawful dumping, um, fish awful or remains in the river, that's, that's okay. Now, if you go dumping them in excess on someone's private property, mm -hmm. that could become an issue. Okay, and uh, what do we need to be looking out for on the river? It's beautiful out here today as we look back across our shoulder. This uh, river's flowing good, it's just beautiful. Uh, people fishing out here behind us, uh, in, enjoying the river. But uh, what are some of the things, of course, life jackets. Right. Number one, that's really important. Yes, sir. What what we call is our, our your basic boating safety equipment. Every person on board a vessel, whether it's motorized or not, is required to have in their possession a wearable personal flotation device, also known as a life jacket. That's Coast Guard approved. Mm -hmm. um, children that are under the age of 13 are required to wear that PFD while the vessel is moving. Mm -hmm. If it's anchored, tied up to the bank, they don't have to have it on. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then just your other safety equipment, like if your vessel requires a fire extinguisher, if it's, you know, has gasoline operated, you know, engine, mm -hmm. if it can trap vapors, um, things like that, you're required to have a, have a life jacket, okay, or excuse what, me, a fire extinguisher. Fire extinguisher. Okay, what are some other things that we need to know as far as operating that boat? All right, a lot of people don't realize that there are rules of the road on the river or a lake operating a vessel. Um, one of the main ones that people seem to forget about is what we call the 100 foot rule or the 100 foot law, which requires you to operate your vessel at idle speed if you're within 100 feet of, say, a bridge piling or structure or abutment, a boat landing, a public beach, a person in the water, uh, a vehicle, of another vessel that's either adrift or anchored outside of the main channel. Um, those are just common examples of the 100 foot rule. Mm -hmm. uh, this past weekend, had a chat with several people about the 100 foot rule and the major safety concern for me with that on this river is people coming by boat landings because people congregate and swim and fish and do things on mm -hmm. foot. They're not in a boat at mm -hmm. the boat landings and I don't ever want to see somebody run over. Yeah. And if you're at idle speed, you've got better control of that vessel. Yeah, we're gonna take a break and we'll be back right after this with Corporal Dan Stiles of the Department of Natural Resources. The Ice House is a beautifully restored warehouse in downtown Dublin that mixes Southern grace and history with an urban modern flair. Book your next special event today at 278-7224. The Ice House, downtown Dublin. Welcome back everybody. I have with me Corporal Dan Stiles, Department of Natural Resources. We were talking about boating a few moments ago. Uh, let's talk about 
because I really want to educate people watching here. We want people to be safe on the river. Right. Uh, give us some more tips there. Well, one thing I want to mention is our website for the law enforcement division is gadnrle.org. Mm -hmm. You can find all the information you want to know about boating rules, regulations, laws, things like that on that website. Mm -hmm. um, also about registration. Now, the other thing that a lot of people don't know, and it was a change in 2014, it became effective July 1 of 2014, is a new comprehensive boater education law. And what that is, is it now requires anyone born on or after January 1st, 1998 to take a boater education course to operate a vessel in Georgia. Good. It's, it's basically like having hunter education to be able to hunt. Mm -hmm. So people can get that course online, um, go into the website, complete it all online, and they give you a, a pretty card to carry with you to okay. prove that you've completed the course. And how old do you have to be? to operate a boat on the water? You, ha you have to be 16 years of age, mm -hmm. but if you were born on or after January 1st, you're still required to have that boater education course. Mm -hmm. um, a child 12 to 15 years of age can operate a class A vessel, which is under 16 feet and under 30 horsepower, motor-wise. Um, they can operate that with someone uh, accompanied by an adult 18 years of age or older. Mm -hmm. um, if they complete a boater education course, then they can operate that same vessel without being accompanied by an adult. Okay, and that's such a great thing. Uh, I ran across my card not long ago. It was dated 1990-something when I took my son to the, to the, we went actually to the, in Perry, to right. the Buckarama and, and <laughs> took the course. and. And he did better than me on the test, so I've never lived that part down. <laughs> that's so. right. That's right. <laughs> but that's a good thing. Right. That's a good thing because we can learn from our children, and we Absolutely. want them all to be safety. We want everybody to be safe. But uh, a lot of guns, I know when you travel on the river out here, people are going to have guns with them. Absolutely. Uh, you never know what you might come up on. But how about uh, you're going to see gators on the on the waters out here on the river. Can you shoot an alligator? No, you cannot. Not, not hunting. Now, obviously, if an alligator is got a hold of your foot and yeah. the only reason you got the way to prevent you from losing your leg is to kill it obviously common sense is going to prevail right. but uh, just as a general rule no mm -hmm. um, now the alligator season well excuse me the alligator uh, permit application time is coming up i believe july 1 you can apply to to receive an alligator permit or quota mm -hmm. on the quota permit system um, and the season will be in september and early october um, you can, you can't, you can't again hunt them with a firearm. You have mm -hmm. to physically have the alligator in your possession before it can be dispatched either with a handgun, um, or with a knife or other blunt instrument. Right. So basically you're saying you have to trap that alligator right. before you can take it. Right. There, there have been people who get an alligator permit and think they can ride up down the river with a <laughs> rifle and shoot one. That's not the case. They yeah. need to read the regulations. That's right. Get him in the boat with you, right? That's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> get Jeff Shepard involved in that. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but uh, so basically to make it clear, uh, your life has to be in danger. Yes. Before you can kill that alligator, no. not just swimming close to the boat. Exactly. Because, uh, uh, I was reading not long ago. Uh, in South Carolina, there's only been like eight attacks in the last, I think this was 1940 something. Right. So alligators uh, really want to steer clear of humans, don't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. Most alligators, if you see them on the river or in the swamps, they may lay there for a minute, but if you spend too much time in their proximity, they're going to mm -hmm. leave. Mm -hmm. um, where, where alligators become a problem is when humans get involved and feed them. They think it's fun to watch yeah. and it is illegal to feed an alligator. Yes. They then, if they become habituated to people providing food, that's when an alligator will be dangerous mm -hmm. to the general public. Absolutely. Steer clear of them because that's they right. don't want to bother you. They that's don't right. want, and they are beautiful to watch. They me? are. So, uh, well, recapping what we talked about today, uh, uh, drinking and operating a boat. Let's touch on that one more time. Yeah, I just want to remind people that Operating a vessel under the influence is, is a violation of law and, and you will be arrested. Mm -hmm. um, we don't like to do that. I'd rather people not drink. Designate a driver just as you would if you're driving a vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, there's a perception that, oh, it's on the river, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And again, it is legal to consume alcohol 
and drive a vessel. Mm -hmm. It is illegal to be under the influence or under the influence to a degree that you're unsafe. Mm -hmm. For example, if you were under the per se limit, but you run into somebody and it can be attributed to that alcohol consumption, you're still going to be in violation. Okay. Always wear a, a life jacket. And I, I know you said if it's if it's tied up to a tree or something, but still, uh, it's good to have because you never know when you may fall in, hit your head on a exactly. stop or anything. So I, I wear my life jacket mm -hmm. when I'm on patrol and when I'm out recreationally boating because mm -hmm. I've seen the things that can happen. Yep. Everybody that drowns in a boating accident didn't leave the house that day going, well, today's my day, yep. and I'm, I'm, but I'm still not going to wear that life jacket. Mm -hmm. If they're, if they're not on you, they're not going to do you a whole lot of good. We encourage people. Well, excuse me. It's it's required that the that the life jackets has to have to be readily accessible. Mm -hmm. I encountered a gentleman and his friend fishing this weekend. Their life jackets were up under the bow, with a cooler up against it, oh. ratchet strapped in front of the the access. There's no way they'd have had time to get if mm -hmm. that vessel started to sink. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. Have them at least available. Yeah, and both of us are very good swimmers, but still, uh, wear that life jacket. That's wear right. that life jacket because you could hit the boat, leaving the vessel. You can hit anything uh, and knock you out, and then yeah, the, you uh, can't swim if you're unconscious. No, absolutely. So, and we just want you to be safe, folks. Please be safe on our waterways. They're here to enjoy as we're watching people uh, this very moment enjoy these waterways. Well, absolutely. Uh, Corporal Dan Styles. You always take time for me, and I know you're busy. I know you're really busy, but I really do appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you, James. Appreciate it. Thank you, brother, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Dale Nifong, your State Farm agent on Hillcrest. We're celebrating 14 years of service to the Dublin and Lawrence County communities. Please call us, text us, or even email us to find out what makes us different and how we can help you. We're located on Hillcrest between Dublin High School and Kroger.